Yeah, right. Well, hello, I'm Ben Drosty. Uh, recently, I started my own independent game studio, but um, before that, I was a senior 3D environment artist and level designer. So I want to talk a bit about level design and art composition as a singular sort of merging of the two fields. OK, where's the button to go forward? Tap. There we go. So art composition is about composing a scene to, well, look pretty, but also to direct the player through the environment. And so AAA games do this really, really, really well, uh, especially look at the Uncharted series and stuff. So what I wanted to talk about today was it's, it's entirely possible for small indie teams to do this. All it requires is you, the artists and the designers to talk to one another. Also helps that they're often sort of the same role at this point anyway. And we don't need huge budgets and luxuries like an art director. So I recently released my game um, called The Eyes of Arad. It's got a lot of good feedback for the art, um, but the point of this talk is to say it's not just about the quality of the graphics, it's also about how those were composed to actually inform the gameplay itself, which is what I'm... So I'm going to use examples from this as I talk about the game. So first up, sight lines. Sight lines are natural lines created by the environment art which sort of lead the eye in a certain direction. So in the case of this one, you can see that the carpet sort of leads towards... That's a bit dark, but... The carpet sort of points towards the end of the corridor. You've got the skirting along the walls, the trail of lights, and even the directionality of the boards along the roof all kind of like point towards the end of the hallway there, which is the master bedroom in this case where I want the player to sort of be drawn towards. In addition to that, you've got these lines coming off to the sides on other bits of wood and whatever, pointing to the big door on the right, and also hinting you can turn off to the left there as well. So it gives an idea of where the player can go. Um, the advantage of this is you can subtly direct the player through the environment um, by how you build, construct the uh, structure level. Another example, um, in this case, because my game is a puzzle game, there's a lot of hidden secrets and puzzles around the place, but it works equally well for any game where there's sort of hidden things. So in this case, there's a clue to a puzzle pretty much right there in the middle of the boxes. Again, you probably can't see it on that screen. And I've used the sort of direction of the boxes and also the screwdriver and the the uh, Stanley knife there to sort of like point at it. And the idea is to sort of lead the eye in there. If you take your time to look, a lot of players just click around randomly anyway. But those who actually take the time to look, ideally their eyes will sort of be drawn to those locations. So they'll feel kind of like they've discovered it themselves, and they have. But it also means they're not going to be completely lost in the environment. Rule of thirds. Rule of thirds is a very uh, fundamental rule, used a lot in photography. It's basically how you sort of compose and balance a scene so it sort of looks nice, usually by having things off to the side and stuff like this. So if you imagine the scene is sort of divided up by third lines, and the idea is to kind of place objects roughly either on the lines or at the intersection to create a kind of balanced scene. So in the case of my game, um, I have a fixed camera that you can freely look around, but as you move between areas, it just sort of teleports from camera to camera. So I've tried to compose each shot as you first enter a room. Um, sort of like this. So the first shot you see is reasonably well balanced with the major puzzles and focal points sort of to these sort of lines. An example here is um, one of the rooms in the game. That is very dark. Um, but because I have the fixed position, I can be ensured that when the camera, when the player looks around a room, pretty much anywhere they look, they're going to have a reasonably well composed shot that they're looking at. Um, so as you move around the room, so you can see there's a cupboard there on the right, and the chest, and go around further, the chest moves over there, you've got another puzzle up there, and around, and around. So everything kind of roughly sort of fits into the composition as you go around the room. Important takeaway of this is it's got to be done during the grey box stage. Um, you have to be thinking about this as you're laying out your level to start with, which is kind of the theme of most of the talk here, is that these are very early on design things, not something to be done later down the track. So when I made these rooms, they were all sort of laid out in grey box stage. All the major puzzles were positioned then, all the lighting was positioned then, and then once I was kind of happy with how it all sat and was composed, then I went and did the art pass over it. Golden Spiral. So the general gist of this one is to sort of lead the eye around a scene and end on a particular point. So in this case, you can kind of see where the eye sort of starts off to the right there, sort of trails around, across the castle, around the top, down the side, and then ends on the gate. It's a really good way of sort of allowing the player to take in the entire scene at once, but also end up where you want them looking. In this case, where they need to be going. 
object positioning. So any designers in the room would do this anyway, but it's more about placing your objects so that it draws the player to where they need to be going. In this case, the objective of this level is to get through that door. This is a shot after it's already opened, but those lights start off and there's four cables coming out, three you can see in the screenshot, all sort of leading into the different rooms. So it's about using the art of the environment to draw connections between places and sort of, in one, one respect, aid the player in seeing where everything's connected to, but also help build a conceptual model of how the game fits together and what's connected. In my case in particular, since it was a puzzle game, I had to be very careful to make sure that when you enter a room with a lot of puzzles, you know what's connected to what. So in this case, I use a lot of the cables to draw connections between the two sort of primary objects there and another cable running off to the door that it opens. Um, if I had multiple puzzles doing multiple different things in a single room, I'd have to either connect them either with objects or by art or some other way to separate them so you know what's connected to what and not just get confused and get all mixed up. Lighting and color, um, fairly straightforward. Uh, you've all seen games where they use spotlights to basically shine a light on something important. It's essentially that. Color's much the same thing in this respect. It's about creating contrast between what you want the player to pay attention to and what you don't care about. So in this case, there's the green sheath, very dark. The green sheath there on the table sort of pops out against the sort of the dull backgrounds and then the light shining on the sheath and the box there. Uh, and the uh, directionality of the light rays also helps sort of point the eye to where you want them to be looking. So another example of that, bright blue generator very much pops out from the gray background and then the big red button in the middle of that. So even the red and yellow on the barrels there, they're sort of a dimmer shade so they don't really draw your attention as much as the big bright stuff in the middle there. Once again, it's really got to be thought about during the grey box stage, particularly with, when in terms of the light sources. Um, in this case, it's the sunlight coming through a window. So I had to think about that at the time I was laying out the grey box level. Where's the window going to be in relation to the sunlight? Where's the generator going to be positioned in relation to the window? And it was effectively, okay, this is the angle the sun's coming in. I'll put the generator there and then I'll just like fiddle with it until it kind of lines up so it shines on the thing. So bring it all together. You don't have to take into account all these things in every room of your level. Um, this one just happens to sort of fall reasonably well within all of them, but it's good to think about them all. So in terms of sight lines, you've got the sort of the curvature of the walls and the bricks and the bottom of the telescope dome there all sort of pointing towards the telescope, which is the central focus of the room, and the telescope itself kind of like pointing off into the sky, which you know, kind of indicates you want to be looking through it up in there. Rule of thirds, so this is kind of the default shot you see when you first enter the room, and it's essentially the camera's positioned so that it falls nicely on that third line there. <clears throat> and the exit to the room is that stairwell on the bottom right sort of sits roughly in that other third golden spiral. This is just sort of a happy accident in this case, but it kind of like goes up around the curvature of the dome, around the telescope, down the shelves at the background, and then into the, the uh, computer there, which is the primary focus of the room. Object positioning. The computer was very intentionally positioned directly below the telescope. Obviously, so you would draw the connection between this telescope is controlled by this computer. The base of the telescope very much positioned so it would point straight down at the computer. And then more subtly, the telescope sort of points up, you can't see it on the screen, but it points up to the gap in the dome doors. The side of the dome door sort of leads down alongside the painting to the switch there, which is supposed to be a little bit hidden, but it's the switch that opens up the dome doors. So I want to kind of draw some sort of connection between what you're looking at and leading you sort of to that so it opens up the doors. Not as important because once you hit the button, it opens, so it's, you know, don't need to worry about too much about that connection, but it's helpful. And of course the light and color, so main light on the computer there and a secondary light above the stairs to exit the room. So, in summary, visually pleasing scene composition can also inform the gameplay. So it's not just about making pretty art and it's not just about the gameplay. Um, you kind of need to do both at the same time to incorporate them. Uh, it can be used to subtly direct the player through the level without needing to signpost directions with big arrows or literal 3D mesh signs going, go this way to the exit, or like you know, floating exclamation marks or something. The ultimate goal would be to lead the player through the environment in such a way that they don't know they're being led. So they just think, oh, I want to go down that corridor over there. That looks interesting. But in reality, you've compose the scene to kind of like draw them in that direction to start with. 
And of course, the way you do it is by level designers and artists working together from the start. So it should not be the level or the, the level artist just sort of making pretty environments off to the side and the level designers just sort of sketching things on paper and going here, make this. Uh, the two of them should be working in conjunction as you're designing the levels and thinking about, all right, where is the major light source going to be? Is it a sun? Is it, is it lanterns or whatever? Um, where are the major elements going to be positioned like that? And how are we going to direct the player through the environment using this? And of course, best laid plans. Once you get into play testing, you will find that you'll need to change a whole lot of stuff too. So don't expect the way you laid out the start to be the way it ends up because this is game development and it's a messy, messy business. And you will be refining it right until the very end. And that's all. So that was probably pretty quick. So if anyone has any questions, yes? Yes, uh, first of all, congratulations on your release. Uh, thank you. And uh, a bit of a naive question, but how, do, how does lighting work in the red box? Do you actually place the lights if you kind of place the different red boxes to see the people? No, no, it's all lit. Um, just basic lighting paths. So it's, it, it's all literally gray boxes. Um, it was built in Unity, so you have to light the scene, otherwise you can't see anything anyway. So it was more about just putting a couple of fill lights in just temporarily, and then a couple of key lights so I can kind of see where the main light sources would be and where the shadows would be cast and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Anyone Yeah? Would you say that this sort of um, can be applied to things like platforming or have such sort of solid models? Yeah, of course. Um, obviously, you're working in two dimensions rather than three in most cases, but it's still about um, how you use the level geometry to draw the player where you want them to go. In the case of a lot of platforms, it's just left to right or something. But um, you can look at look at games like the old Donkey Kong Country games. They're an excellent example of um, hidden secrets, and a lot of their secrets are hidden very subtly off screen. And if you take the time to look at the way they've designed the levels, it's often done in ways to sort of hint that there might be something off screen somewhere. Um, often that's some bit of art in the background that doesn't that seems a bit out of place or maybe it's the direction of the slope of the ground sort of like kind of like subtly points down there or something. So that's what it's about. It's not about just 3D games. It's about how you structure the art to indicate directionality or, um, yeah, and focus. Anyone else? Yes? It might be a silly question, but <clears throat> when I've been playing Dungeons and Dragons on tabletop pencil and paper, every time I throw in some bit of flavor text, players could go chasing after that and they get locked jaw and they won't let it go. Do you ever have it where like the lighting accidentally calls out some feature? And yes. <laughs> that has happened a number of times. Hasn't been a huge problem in my game um, because it's a sort of hidden secrets around a place. If they see something lit up and they click on it, no big deal. It doesn't do anything. Um, so it can happen. Um, I've, it, in worse situations, people are completely fixated on something, thinking this has got to be what I'm after. It's like prominent, it's lit, it's yeah. whatever, and it's, it's nothing. Okay. Or it's a completely unrelated puzzle. So that's where the playtesting comes into it. It's seeing where people are getting stuck and what they're focusing on when they shouldn't be. Um, so yeah. So well, yeah, you can... Yeah, well, in fact, I did that in a couple of sessions too. When I saw people constantly clicking on this, there was this one photo frame in one of the levels which the light from the window just happened to shine on it. Everyone kept clicking on it, so I was like, oh, fine, I'll put a secret there. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, how do you go about designing um, here? I've played a bit of your game. Fantastic. Um, cool. Thanks. How do you go about planning or, or approaching the sort of organized club? Mm. How do you go about placing all of those assets without it being too much? Yeah, so um, that's something I plan on talking about more in an expanded version of this talk. I actually cut it out of this version. Um, but yeah, a big thing about my game, because it's, it's sort of half puzzle solving and half sort of hidden objects for the gameplay, I didn't want people just clicking around randomly on everything because it is just full of clutter. So figuring out the best way to fill up the place with clutter and not have it just look like a mess and be confusing was a kind of a challenge. So that's where a lot of these things come into it in about how you compose the initial shot 
how you light things, how you use the colour and the contrast to draw attention to the important elements and have the non-important elements and all the clutter and stuff kind of just sort of fade into the general layout of the room. So generally, most, most things in the game are pretty sort of uh, more flat, duller kind of tones and most of the bright contrast and colour comes from the important things that I want to highlight. So the eyes tend to draw into it. The main goal with the layout of the game was um, the puzzles themselves shouldn't be hidden. I don't want, except in a few specific circumstances, I don't want people searching for puzzles. I want them identifying them, clicking on them, and then spending time solving them. Um, the hidden object stuff, all the bonus pickups, I'm okay with that being hidden, that's the point of them. So they can be more disguised among the dark areas and stuff. And then that got fun designing um, how to hide them. And so they're in such a way that they don't just blend in entirely, but they stand out just enough that it, if you look carefully, you might notice it and click on it sort of thing, yeah. Yes? Um, so in your game, you've got the eyes flying around, and they obviously like, hover over places, and they're, like, you know, they're lit and they're blue, so you look at them. But mm -hmm. I find that like, um, in the stillness of the castle, their movement catches my eye. Was that a conscious decision like having them around? Yes. Um, there's a good example of that in the second level when you reach the library. There's, um, there's this puzzle where you have to solve these four icons on these pillars around the top of the room. Now, the icon is just below the top of the screen, so you can actually see it when you enter the room. But another thing I didn't have time for in this talk is the player does not look up. The player never looks up. Simple as that. And even though this is on the top of the screen, your eye is sort of like drawn to the middle and then down. And players will immediately get the camera and then like just look like this. It's really annoying. And it's, it's the same for every game, not just my game. It's games in general. With 3D camera, players don't look up. So that, that one in particular was placed, the light, um, because nobody was ever seeing it. And it was such a big, obvious thing that nobody noticed. I intentionally put that little drone flying around between these four points. Um, so once you're in the room, you notice the light and solve that problem immediately. So that's, again, it's about drawing contrast. So in this case, it was not only the light and the bright blue color, but also the movement itself drew attention to it. <laughs>